I will tell you that I know for sure that I'm not certain if this is working. So we will <laughs> we will find out for sure. I love it. First podcast ever, Joe Sanfilippo. Happy to have you. Thanks for having me. And thanks for like spending time with me today. Your staff was incredible. This like is, they were awesome. This is a, an awesome group and we're we're really excited to be kicking this year off. It's gone really, really well. Well, one of the things I thought was really cool about the day was like I think anytime somebody new comes in, you you wonder. Right. Like, like, who's the guy? Like, what's going on? Why? Why? Like, I got stuff to do. I need to be in my classroom. I need to get ready for kids or whatever. But literally six minutes into it, you could tell there was like a, almost like a shift. Like, OK, we're going to get here to kind of like take care of each other for a little bit. Maybe we can talk about stuff that's going to help everybody out. And it didn't feel like everybody knew that they had stuff to do. But it almost became secondary because the stuff that we were talking about could help them on a daily basis. And I, I like to me, that's like the peak of what we're trying to get done. And your group was like locked into it. It was awesome. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, we have such a fantastic group of mm -hmm. teachers here. And uh, I think that your message resonated very mm -hmm. clearly. I think you found that when... Uh, we spoke to some folks afterwards as well. They were they were really keyed into some of the things you had to say. You know, it's that's cool because I like I go to I get a chance to go to a lot of places. I'm very humbling uh, in terms of the reaction, but um, there are a few places that you get as many people that that came up to me after and said this this really clicked with me and this clicked with me and this is another and here's another story. And here's one more thing I wanted to tell you. And I love it. I I would always lean into those conversations. There was just more here than there are usually. And I think that really speaks to the culture that you have, the culture that you want, and the fact that everybody, I think, inherently, even if they don't want to say it, even if they don't want to say it, they know that they're doing good things along the way and doing great things for kids. And if we can help people talk about it more, then you, you put yourself in a different situation. And that was evident today. It was very cool. We, uh, we've been working uh, really hard on, on making sure that culture is top of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I shared with the staff, we're at a point now where the teacher dropout rate is starting to eclipse the student dropout yeah. rate. And it's something we have to pay attention to because uh, culture is more important than ever in schools. And mm -hmm. so we spent a lot of time on that. And, um, and I think that the message that you shared helped reinforce it. So it was really good. Well, I appreciate that. We've gone this, it, a lot of times people talk about, oh, so here's the difference, right? People say, well, we want to have a great culture. We want to have a great culture. We want to have a great culture. And that's great. And then it becomes this big, like, like, you know, overarching, like almost like an umbrella, but then they don't talk about like how they actually do it. What does it look like tomorrow? Like, how do we take care of each other as opposed to people waiting, you know, waiting for, for them to take care of us, which is not happening. So what can we do to take care of each other? So we feel like we're invested into culture. So it's always, we spent a lot of time this morning talking about our, like, you know, mm -hmm. it's, instead of, you know, it's, it's we, us, our, not me, you, them. And like, when I said that out loud, you could just kind of see like heads, snap back my way like yes that's who we are this is our opportunity and if we can p make people feel valued in that then they're gonna then they're willing to talk about it if they don't feel like they're valued in the work that they do then they won't talk about it but if they feel valued it gives them an opportunity to talk about it we, we made that analogy this morning of you know there's a different distinct difference between being proud of something and defending something Right. Like, you like I can tell you what you're proud of by looking at your phone, mm -hmm. you know, kids, pet, house, car, hunt, fish, cabin, boat, all the stuff that's on your phone, as opposed to when you feel like you're defending the work, you avoid those conversations because you walk out feeling more intense than when you walked in. So what can we do to make sure that people not only feel proud of the work, but are willing to talk about the work? I think to tie that together, I think it's especially true in career and technical mm -hmm. education because the perceptions of career and technical education are very strong and are not always accurate. Right. And I think that that we feel here we are offering some unbelievably important things to okay. students. We have 21 career and technical yeah. programs, but that's not 21 programs for 21 jobs. That's right. 21 programs for 21,000 jobs. That's amazing. And we really want to get that message out so that people see us for who we are. Mm -hmm. And I think your message this morning helped reinforce that that's what's happening is we yeah. you know we need to tell our story so that uh, so that those voids aren't filled by what people think we are. And who are those stories coming from? They're coming from, they think about, it, we have kids that are coming to you. The kids that are coming to you have a great experience, right? Every kid, every kid that goes, I, I, saw, I saw all the comments from the kids and what they expect from this place and what they get out of this place. I get that. That's awesome that the kids are feeling this way. But let's, let's be honest. The negative, not even the negativity, the misperception often comes from the parents of those kids who 
went through career in tech 25 years ago when it didn't look like this. It didn't feel like this. Mm -hmm. So then that becomes a perception when that's not what it is right now. Right. So to have those kids being, you know, talking about the great stuff that's going on changes not only the perception of the school, but the conversation around the dinner table or in the car or wherever kids are having conversations right. with parents online, whatever it is. Now, all of a sudden, it changes the way that people talk about the work that we do. And I'm certain that if uh, if you thought you knew who we were, but mm -hmm. didn't actually know who we were, you, you wouldn't know that our students last year were awarded a patent, right. that our students in our multimedia program were national award winners mm -hmm. at, you know, across the country, they're, they're national award winners. Uh, really neat, incredible things happening here. Uh, and your message is, it makes it incumbent upon us to make sure that we're right. the ones telling that story. And uh, it, it hit home. It Good. hit home. So I appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. I appreciate your time very, very much. Have a great day. And you as well. Take All care. Right. Ambitious is a student produced project of Middle Bucks Institute of Technology. To find out more about MBIT, visit us at www.mbit.org.